Well, my name is Gladys Melo. I am the country specialist for Niger and Senegal for the, the section, the American section of Amnesty International. And uh, I work also in the West Africa Working Group. And uh, we deal with French speaking countries and English speaking countries. And um, it has been uh, my story since I have uh, Niger as, as my work, is to see that people are <coughs> all the time, you know, confused. Uh, Nigeria with Niger. And very, very different countries. You're going to see a little bit. Uh, I'm going to really invest more time more working and talking about the Niger. And you're going to see a little bit of the context from our work. Then uh, my idea was, first of all, share our report that we released last week. Uh, the situation of what is happening in West Africa uh, in my in my in my end. Uh, the second part is to see uh, the situation of, of stability. Uh, we have uh, a very important engagement from the U.S. there. That means us. And a little bit to explain how I want to talk about Nigeria, Niger, Niger and Nigeria, and what are you know some. Um, possibilities as Americans to change things in the region. Then you all know that we are the, we want everyone in the world. Our mission, our vision is that everyone can, you know, have and fulfill all human rights and all the, the rights that are in any convention and any humanitarian accord and be equals, have the same opportunities, have the possibility to enjoy and you know a normal life, a life without war, especially if we talk about the region. Uh, mainly our our work in the region is of course we work in we work is kind of big say but we you know we are very proactive in any country in Africa. Um, of course, we are answering case by case. Um, our idea is to educate our Congress, our government, and of course, ask them, because we have a very important <coughs> leverage as Americans through our Congress to our government, because we are a big donor when we talk about foreign aid, and especially military foreign aid. And, uh, well, of course, the, the, the main issues that we work in the region are uh, justice and accountability. We work on civilian protection, of course. Uh, extractive industries, uh, we, I was here like kind of months ago, I was talking about uh, business accountability in Senegal. Uh, forced evictions is a very, very important issue for us. And uh, for me, in Niger, uh, security and human rights is, is the core of my work. And I want to talk about the Trans-Saharan Counter-Terrorism Partnership Before Call Initiative. That is not new, but for us it's new because publicly we heard about that last year in a speech that the president gave at Power po uh, 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 West Point. Uh, it was like April or May. Then uh, going back again to, to our report, I'm going to just highlight the main issues that are related to my region and my, my countries of responsibility. And uh, we have Two things for me that are very concerning, especially because we are seeing a region that is very impacted by armed conflict. And uh, the fact that there is a regression and impact against the International Criminal Court is very important because it's the only way to really have justice. 
And uh, we have, the, you know, there is an amendment to the mm -hmm. protocol of the Statute of African Court of Justice and Human Rights. And uh, it was all the, the, the presidents of the African Union saying, well, you know, we want to be, we, want, we, we don't want to be accountable for things that happen in our role as head of states. And they, they got that. They got that, and that's a backlash for human rights in the region that is very serious. It's very concerning because that means that, you know, uh, the situation in Chad, for example, if we, ha we have uh, crimes against humanity during all the, the fight against uh, Boko Haram, that means the, he's not going to be accountable. And uh, he can do what he wants. The same that uh, John, uh, John Locke, uh, Jonathan, the president of Nigeria, that, that's very serious. Um, and what is, is very <laughs> concerning is the fact that also the African Union Peace Security Council, that is, you know, the idea is to support and uh, give stability, contribute to human rights and so forth. Well, we see that peacekeepers are involved in human rights violations. And that's very concerning. Yeah, we're going to talk about that later. Then, like always, there are very big uh, human rights and uh, humanitarian law violations. Then, of course, uh, there is, we, we know Africa, uh, big inequality, that means we have communities asking for having the same shot that the others and the repression is is very big and uh, we have not only the conflict communities leaving their their <coughs> towns or cities because you know they are they are they are on the threat but we have a government that is not meeting the needs of of, his, of its people then we have, uh, you know, two main, uh, for us Americans, uh, that's very important, the freedom of expression and uh, association in peaceful assembly is not allowed because of questions of security. A country called Niger that maybe nobody have heard about it. And uh, it's a country, I'm going to tell you later, but because I want to tell you a little bit what is happening, who is playing in the region and so forth. But it's, it's a country that has no access to any water. So it's, it's, it's really surrounded by countries that have <coughs> big conflicts. That's Mali, that it's trying to sign, no stable yet. We have Nigeria in the south, we, where, where Boko Haram is, is just the border with, uh, with, uh, with the Niger and, uh, between Niger and Nigeria. And we have in the north something that is very scary now. And we don't talk because we are not, we're not very involved and it's Libya. Jihad, jihad is not what we heard uh, in the news. Really, the position that Boko Haram, I'm not sure if they are religious, but they have very um, traditional views of the society, and they make their uh, a very reactionary branch of the traditional fundamentalistic Islam, and uh, it's kind of scary for, especially for women that they have already. Amnesty has, um, recently use, we have been using for like three or four years uh, all the systems of information. We're not taking any, any, um, any image coming from government and so forth. It's more this kind of image that comes from news uh, and uh, we analyze and, and we see that's Baga. That, that, that was the, the big carnage that the Boko Haram did in Nigeria in the north because born, it, it, the north is their, their sanctuary because uh, they rely in an ethnic group, specific ethnic group that is 
not only in the north of Nigeria, but in the south of Niger and some part of Cameroon and Chan. And Baga, when, you know, the African people were saying, you know, we're, we're, we're talking about Charlie Hebdo, but we're not talking about Baga. What happened? They killed a lot of people in cold blood, especially women and so forth. And that's the, all just the destroyed buildings. That's terrible. It's small towns. And they, they, that's something that it's scary too because it seems that I'm not knowledgeable in the, in the things of satellites and so forth, but it seems that the, the, the color of the vegetation change because of the, the attacks and all the, the, the intervention when you have firing and so forth. And it's, it's very concerning because it's, it's huge. It's, it begins to be very, very huge. And it's the only way, of course, to, to see where, you know, where they are, where they are impacting. When you see that, you see they are, they are, they are conquering spaces. And it's kind of scary. Of course, to this kind of, of uh, intervention of extremist groups, we have a police and a military who is reacting very seriously, very even in excess force, using excess force. Then it's, it's, very, <laughs> it's very serious. Then, um, in the case of Ni Nigeria, for example, they have a, 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 like a special period of time, then it's kind of security and so forth. Then you, you can enhance your, your methods or detention, uh, torture and so forth. We have also uh, last year released a report on the use, normal use of torture uh, by, by the uh, Nigerian armed forces then, by the way, we're trained too by the U.S. military. Then that's that's very, very critical situation. There is a coda. A coda is specifically for peacekeepers. And we have, well, the United States is, is training in different ways. Is uh, we, we go with the Army. We go with special forces. We go with uh, private companies, I'm going to tell you later. And we have a training peacekeepers. We have done that for years. Um, it was formally uh, called the, the crisis, crisis, African Crisis Response Initiative. And it comes from uh, the government of Clinton, first government of Clinton. Um, and the idea was to train, but uh, I'm, I'm not sure that we have done something interesting yet. We also have something that is called Cooperative Security Locations, Gabon, uh, Senegal, and uh, Ghana. And of course, we're there through the local military, and of course we have we, we have uh, this basis to protect U.S. interests and at the same time, if there is conflict, to evacuate Americans, mainly. And of course, after there is, all Americans are out, well, we think about the other, mm, you know, Western uh, citizens of the world. Uh, at the same time, uh, it's not only military use. We have the private companies, military companies, U.S. companies that are using the, the locations too. That's very scary too. Then we know that U.S. is training now. Now it's public. We heard that newspaper have a picture of, of training. We haven't had that before last year. We have been for many years, and it was secret. We didn't know that, except if you go because you're, you're, uh, you're evaluating a program or you are an expert in some issues related to their training. 
but it's very secretive. I, I think it's secrecy is like the, the name of the game when we talk about uh, counterterrorism in, in our country. That's very concerning. Yeah. This is something that is more scary, is the outsourcing and privatization of counterterrorism. We have these, these uh, trainings that are only implemented by, because you know, Americans are not able to, well, the, the army is not able to, to train all the people. Then we outsource that for American companies by uh, Dine Corps. Um, you have like 10 that receive big contracts, big money to train peacekeepers. We have, this is a, this is a, a, a I think it's from, from a, a Nigerian. He was trained by um, Pai, that is a US company, private company, military company. And it, it was the first intervention to Mali. It, uh, is a, of, of course, it's an operation uh, is a UN operation of stabilization. We have people from different armies. The way that they do that is you call the armies in the, in the place and you say, well, you know, we're going to train you. You're going to be in the battalion of Afizma that was the first. The first was really, really war. After the idea is the, is the MINUSMA, called the MINUSMA. The MINUSMA, the idea is stabilization. You, yes, there are all the, the peacekeeping operations are, are chapter seven, but you're gonna be among people. And it happens that the first group of people trained by company, American company, we have the first claims of sexual harassment, rape in Mali. Are we doing something good? I don't think so. Then we, we know, we know that. We know the, the fact is we have, we are not, one thing it's important to, to let, you know, don't feel guilty as American. We're not the only one we're doing that. It's not true. Stand up, tell them. You're not the only one. We're not the only one. You know, in, in, uh, in the region that I'm working is in the West Africa and uh, the uh, Sahelo, La Bande Sahelo Saharian. We have two main partners, United States and we have the French. The difference is the French are very transparent. You know how, how many people they have, where are the bases, because they need to be accountable. We don't have that. We have others too, but they're like, you know, hiding a little bit. The UK, because they have like, you know, especially Canada, they say, oh, the peacekeepers, they're nice, they're in. that's not true. That's not true. Don't feel, you know, French are using drones now. Maybe unarmed for the moment, but they're dealing. You know, they, they, they evicted, you know, physically one of the main group, terrorist groups in Mali. They are, they are ferocious. They are ferocious. And if you have, I, I, I was in the training and uh, they were racist too. Then uh, you have these French people like killing, killing, killing. It's, it's, it's scary. And I think we can do something as, uh, as Americans. Uh, we want security, yes, but we don't want that human rights go violated. Well, not in my case. I don't know if people think in a way. Of course, France has a long uh, relation with Africa. All former colonies, territories, um, they have, of course, a lot of interest, economic interest. In Mali, in, um, in uh, uh, Niger, and you, you're, you're gonna, I'm gonna show you the map, they have a big, big, big mine of uranium. Then for them, the protection of the uranium 
for 50 years they have this mind. They don't want to give that up. Forget it. <laughs> they don't want to give that up. And this is a region that it's, it's very poor. And uh, they're, you know, 50 years exploring there, having the uranium, and the communities are dying of radiation, and they want to be separated, of course. Um, French uh, went on 2013 to have the mission called Serval, and it was, the idea was to, you know, have uh, the boot on the ground, and really, uh, you know, kind of uh, fight the, 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 the terrorist groups, the extremists uh, in Mali. And um, at the end, uh, next, next year, uh, I mean, uh, August of last year, we have, at the same time, I don't know how it was so, so, you know, it's like, what a coincidence. The, the summit, Africa summit, we have uh, all the presidents here, and at the same time, French now are not only in, uh, in, uh, in uh, Mali, but they are in the same countries the United States are. Interesting. Because, you know, they, I, 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 I mentioned the situation of the people who were detained and have no trial until now. Until our report, there were no trial against them. They are detained, tortured, and so forth, nothing. And uh, it's, they increase security, yes, of course. But, you know, close the embassies. Uh, it's, you know, what is happening with the people? Instead of securing that, why you don't, you know, give them water and education and so forth, maybe the situation is going to be less terrible. That, one thing that is terrible, too, with all this, it doesn't matter. Conflict always exacerbate the situation of women. Women, with, especially with children, are, you know, always the collateral damage. They are not taking into account that. I saw, you know, these these soldiers saying, "Well, you know, no problem. They within they have women in in their armies, but they 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 were harassed." And uh, I tried, in the, you know, the, the company says, don't, don't bother, we can not do that. I said, we cannot send a perpetrator to fight in another country and violate women there. I, I'm sorry, I cannot. And, uh, well, they didn't, they <coughs> didn't denounce, but I was aware that these, uh, some of the women within the contingent were were object of harassment. That's terrible. We can we need to do something. We have nine point seven jobs in humanitarian for refugees, just for refugees because they are receiving a lot of refugees. Um, we are not a big we are a big donor, but uh, I mean it's it's so so many countries that are giving. I don't think it's it's right. It's not a lot of money, no. But you know, they're not demanding a lot either. They prefer military issues. American. I think the first thing is I want to be informed. I don't know you, but I want to be informed. I want to know what is happening. I'm paying taxes. Just as taxpayer, I want to know what is happening with the money. You know, my other sections are not. <laughs> this is not the approach they use because they don't used to do that. But I think here that matters, because we work, you know, you go to your senator or your representative and you said, well, you know, I'm paying taxes. What is happening with these taxes? Are we training perpetrators? Are we training, what are we doing? What is happening, you know, what is, where the money goes? Why they are bigger than before? How come the Islamic State is bigger? Maybe because we're not investing in the place where we need, we need to invest. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Other thing is we need, and that's another thing that we, we can do, is the fact that we cannot support countries like Chad, 
that is not a democracy. We cannot train uh, armies that are proof, of, uh, that are, have violated human rights that the Nigeria, Nigeria military. One thing is, of course, they're using the military instead of the police to, to control the people within the country. That's another thing that, well, that happens in many countries. Colombia is one case with clear case. But I think this is a, an interesting step to, to undertake to, to say, well, I want to be informed. I want to know what is happening. Um, issues related to security in the United States are like a dark space, a gray zone that we don't know and are very concerning. Um, NSA is clear. Torture is clear. We don't know the situation of prisons around the world. That is related to that. We don't talk about it. We always had all oh, the Americans and the drones, but we have another countries doing the same thing. You know, we're uh, one thing is concerning is now the government has given permission to sell drones to allies. What is happening with the drones, armed drones that are going, you know, like the, the, the weapons we find in Mexico, for example, that are U.S. made weapons, you know, are going to be appearing the drum drones there too? I'm not sure that I'm going to be able to support these kind of things. But it's... Um, uh, I'm going to, yes, uh, that, uh, one thing is uh, we need to push our government to, to sign conventions. Um, Mali, all these countries that are violating human rights in Africa have signed everything. At least the United States is coherent. He has signed only the, the, uh, against racism and that's all. And well... He's not very coherent what is when you see what is happening within the country, but the rest, nothing. Has signed nothing. That's, that can be, you know, first step. Maybe if we sign something, we're going to be more accountable. People are going to be more, you know, sensitized to the situation, maybe. Uh, I think... Our soldiers need to be accountable each time they go to conflict just because we're paying them. And I leave you with uh, Lehi and, Lehi and uh, what he said about uh, the, when the, the uh, Nigerian ambassador says, oh, it's, it's the amendment who is... Uh, the problem, and he said, no, the problem is the, the situation is very clear. We are not allowed by law to support armies of countries that are, are not democracies and armies that are, have violated human rights. And that's very clear. Thank you, Senator Lincoln. <laughs>